This is the Scoop for Tuesday. I'm Megan Bowman with the WMNF News Headlines. A judge says Piney Point's operators are responsible for the major spill of toxic wastewater into Tampa Bay in 2021, which resulted in one of the deadliest red tide events in the region. And opponents say the civic penalty inadequately compensates for the damage caused to the environment. The owners of Piney Point, HRK Holdings, have been ordered to pay nearly $850,000. But there's one problem. The company declared bankruptcy in 2011. Reagan Whitlock is with the Center for Biological Diversity. He says HRK received the maximum fine allowed by law, but it pales in comparison to the damage caused. Frankly, the amount of destruction in Tampa Bay, the amount of life lost within Tampa Bay's waters truly is incalculable. No amount of money can ever make up for what happened, and the Tampa Bay region will be reeling from this for years to come. Whitlock says the payments are part of an environmental restitution for hazardous wastewater spilled and the money will go back to the U.S. Treasury. Some Florida school districts are rolling back a more comprehensive approach to sex education in favor of abstinence-focused lessons. State officials have pressured districts to restrict some lesson plans on contraception, anatomy, and consent, saying the lessons are inappropriate for students. The shift reflects a nationwide push to restrict what kids can learn about themselves and their bodies. Advocates are concerned that young people won't reliably be taught about safe sex or relationship violence at a time when sexually transmitted diseases are on the rise and access to abortion is increasingly restricted. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service announced a plan yesterday to more than double the critical habitat designated for manatees in the state. Central Florida Public Media's Joe Burns explains any federal permits or funding within the habitat has to be reviewed by the wildlife agency. The revised map is nearly 15 years in the making since environmental groups, including the Center for Biological Diversity, got the Fish and Wildlife Service to acknowledge it needed to update the one created in 1977. Here's Reagan Whitlock, staff attorney for the center. This has been a long time coming, and we're incredibly happy that it came out. We may be able to to nitpick certain items, but this is a a critical first step in identifying how we can protect the habitat that matters the most for the Florida manatee. The new map applies decades of science to identify physical and biological features critical to protecting the threatened species. It now includes natural warm water sources like Silver Springs and Tampa Bay. Separately, the agency plans this year to complete a status review of manatees to see if they should be upgraded from threatened to endangered. In Ocala, I'm Joe Burns. It's National Diaper Need Awareness Week. Did you know that in the U.S., half of the families struggled to provide enough diapers to keep a baby clean, dry, and healthy? WMNF's Chris Young reports Tampa is partnering with a local group to help people in need. The Junior League of Tampa's flag was raised in a ceremony downtown to signify a partnership with the city. Both will work to provide diapers for families in need. Tampa Council Member Luis Vieira says diapers may seem cheap, but they're a big cost for some. I think of areas like Sulphur Springs, where 75% of the children live in poverty, areas like the university area, uh, East Tampa. I think of East County, where we have many, many new families, families who are immigrant families, refugee families. The Tampa Municipal Office Building and the City Center at Hannah Avenue are accepting donations. Chris Young, WMNF News, Tampa. All eyes are on potential tropical cyclone 9 this morning, which is forecasted to impact our state tomorrow and Thursday. The system is currently in the Western Caribbean near Cancun, but meteorologist Megan Borowski says it's posed to accelerate and rapidly intensify over the next few days. The system will slowly move northward into the Gulf today and tomorrow. It's expected to become a hurricane by tomorrow and as it accelerates through the Gulf Wednesday and Thursday, we are expecting significant strengthening and it will likely become a major hurricane before landfall on Thursday. Now, as far as landfall goes, really, interest from Destin to Newport Ritchie should all be on high alert because they are in the cone of uncertainty and it's likely that landfall will occur between these two points. 
Borowski says that a tropical storm watch is in effect from the Keys to the coast of Sarasota County. A hurricane watch is in effect from the vicinity of Venice to Port St. Joe in the Panhandle. She says that winds will arrive from north to south, reaching the Keys on Wednesday afternoon and the northern peninsula in Panhandle by early Thursday. Landfall is expected over the Panhandle, Big Bend, or Nature Coast on Thursday afternoon or evening. You can find more information in English and in Spanish on our website, WMNF.org. I'm Megan Bowman with the WMNF News Headlines. This is The Scoop, recorded at WMNF Tampa.